Hi, it's Karen here back with Karen Codes and we are on part six of the memory game. And we just finished going over Window Builder and how it can help you design your GUI layout. Uh, we don't have Window Builder as an option within Java at EE. And if you have a newer edition of Java EE, Eclipse Op Oxygen, an option you have is to go to the window menu and there is a, at the bottom of it for Eclipse Oxygen, there is a, a marketplace option. And if you go to that marketplace, you can type in Window Builder or Java Swing and see if it comes up with any options that will enable you to download and add on that to your uh, Enterprise Edition. Enterprise Edition is more specifically designed for JavaFX, and I know you can use the Marketplace to download the FX editors um, because they're no longer built in to Java. They were uh, in some previous versions, but then they split it out into its own open source project. So a lot of information there, but um, okay, back to our memory game. I kind of took it past well, quite a bit past where it was so that I can make sure that it would work so I could show you how it works. And I just want to run it now to show you what I changed it into. And I'm going to run it as a Java application. Now this other option, run on server, that's from when I did some uh, Java Swing apps with Hi Hibernate and JDBC, but that's more information than you need right now. But here is the memory game. Now, if you notice to the right here, I actually took off the panel that had the score display and the button. And I did that a couple of days ago because I got the game itself to work, but then I was feeling frustrated because I wasn't able to get the, the button to actually replay the game. And I wasn't able to get the score to actually display. And the reason why is because of scope and the score was within the scope of this one component that displays the cards, but it wasn't accessible in the panel that contains the, the grid and the score component. And so I couldn't get it to actually update the score. It would check the score the one time, but then be done. And so I just got rid of that component in frustration, but we can always add it back and figure it out later. But for right now, this part works and I have all my different pictures and I'll just show you what it does real quick. It's nothing terribly exciting. What I wanted to have happen is once all the matches were found, I wanted a winner screen to come up. And part of my issue is that I'm able to make the whole thing disappear, but I wasn't able to get a new screen to appear just yet because there's some figuring behind the scenes to figure out. And the thing is, is this program as written is a single threaded program. And that means it'll go through step by step of each, each thing once, but then in order to start over again it needs a while loop or it needs something that kind of keeps it going or starts a new thread or it needs to be multi-threaded which i haven't learned how to do yet so <sighs> one thing at a time so we will start by just tackling the problem of filling up this empty window and we'll go ahead and put back both the grid and the side panel with the button and the score and I'll show you how to get the actual game working like I did. And then after I figure out how to get the score part working with it, I will add that part back in to the videos. Hopefully that sounds like a plan. Okay, so now <laughs> to make this work, I actually changed the design and I got rid of the card class. Okay, that was the way that worked for me to make it happen. And so what I did in the memory game app, all we have is the game frame that we're making visible. So you see gameframe.java up here. Okay, that's popping up. 
the actual game frame that's with the title that says Christmas memory game and the little logo up in the bar. And that is all it's doing, except that it's also calling the game panel. And the game panel is what currently is displaying the grid panel, the grid pane, the grid of cards, okay? So what you want to do is make sure that your game panel is calling the grid panel object. It's so basically what happens, I should probably back up and explain this. Right here, I am calling the constructor for grid panel and I'm calling I'm I'm storing it in a variable that I'm calling grid pane. Okay? And that's what enables me to add the grid pane to my to my grid panel, or excuse me, to my game panel. <laughs> a little confusing there, the names. But okay, so right here we have our constructor, and what it does is it sets the layout, and it's a border layout with the 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 header, the footer, the center, and left and right if you choose to use them. Now, what we did is we specified, hey, put the grid pane in the center, okay? And then I made a second panel, and that's the window panel. And I called it wind pane, and I added that in the border layout to the north with the capital letters, it's a constant. And so what that does is it says, okay, make the grid as big as you need it to be, and whatever whatever space you have left, put in the, the button and the control thing and blah blah blah. And I set the visibility on the panel to false because it wasn't working. Okay, so we still have that window panel, but it doesn't currently actually do anything. I was trying to play around with this and make it a a window, like a, hey, you're a winner panel. This is not actually the score panel, sorry, I'm confusing you. Um, I was trying to do something else and it wasn't working. And so it was going to be the win panel, like, hey, you win, congratulations. And then it didn't work and it didn't come up. And I think, like I said, it's because of a multi-threading um, issue. And I wasn't sure where in the sequence of code it needed to go. Because the score from the game, or the grid, excuse me, the grid, it gets a little confusing when there's multiple classes. The score was outside the scope of all the rest of the classes. And so it wasn't recognizing, hey, it's time to switch out one screen with another. And I haven't quite worked out yet how to make that happen. I will, I just haven't yet. So we will start with the code for the grid of cards. So what you should have is you should have an integer that keeps track of the number of buttons. And you'll find out later in the code what that's for. Okay, so that's a later thing to, and all we're doing here is declaring it. We're initializing it, which is setting the value for it down inside the program in the constructor. Okay, right here we have a static string array of pictures, and I took the names of the pictures directly from this memory game images folder. And because memory game is the name of our class that we're already in. Actually, never mind. It's not because of that. Well, it is because of that, but anyway, for right now, we're just going to do images as your folder name and then the slash and then the name of it. And just make sure that the name and the extension both match. You can have um, a ping, a JPEG, a, or a GIF, GIF. It doesn't really matter. You can either have also have JPE or JPEG. It, it's not picky, but just make sure that what you have here matches what you have here and it'll work out for you. So I've, I chose eight files and then I have that I have a total of 10 in my folder. I've got the logo and I got the new star and the new star is the card back image and in order for it to appear you need to have an image icon. So have put static J button buttons. The reason it's static is because we want to tell the program that no matter what class I'm in, if I alter string picks, 
I'm altering this string picks and not creating a new string picks. It's kind of complex, but that's what that means. So we'll stop here and then we'll come back and explain the next step. Thanks for watching.